So your teenage child has been diagnosed with functional neurological disorder, short for FND, and the doctor keeps telling your child to relax. The question is why? Why is the relaxation important if not necessary to treat and or resolve your teenager's FND? And it's not just about anxiety. Hi, my name is Dr. Lee. I'm a pediatric psychologist and chronic pain survivor myself. My mission is to help teens and their parents resolve persistent physical symptoms such as chronic pain and FND so that they can get their life back and feel like normal again, because I truly believe that every teen deserves so much more in their lives. If this is a new to my channel, welcome. And I do have a free parenting PDF guide to help your teen at home who is struggling with chronic pain or FND. So make sure to click the link below and then grab the copy today. So today's video is all about relaxation. Why is relaxation necessary to resolve FND in our first place? And I specifically want to talk about the difference between deep breathing and slow belly breathing. So let's get to it. So really quick, because FND is the second most common diagnosis that you would get in neurology clinic. However, nobody knows about it and nobody talks about it. So let me explain really quick what FND is. Well, FND is an umbrella term to basically describe the cross-wired problems between the brain and the body, even though structurally there is nothing wrong, okay? But it makes the FND diagnosis legit and then real, so your child is not making things up. And as I mentioned, this is the second most common diagnosis you would get in neurology clinic, right next to headaches and migraines, but nobody knows about it and nobody talks about it. And FND is caused by not just one thing. So it's not just one psychological thing or one biological thing or one social issue. In fact, it is a biopsychosocial phenomenon. What that means is there's a biological, there are psychological and there are social components included and involved in this FND. So not everyone has the exact same reason or cause to have this FND. And for that same token, if somebody is having an FND and then this treatment of, let's say, acupuncture worked really well, that may or may not be the case for your child in particular because FND has so many different subcategories. And I do have a video explaining what they are as well. So click the link below. So why are we talking about relaxation in the first place in relation to teen FND? Well, because there is a connection between FND and unbalanced or dysregulated autonomic nervous system. What is autonomic nervous system? You might be familiar with what it is already, but you might notice more of this fight or flight system also known as a sympathetic nervous system, and then rest and digest, which is parasympathetic nervous system. These two systems are part of autonomic nervous system. And as a name in case, these two things are constantly automatically sort of balancing with each other. And when something happens, then one or the other system gets turned on and then turned off at the same time kind of thing. Okay. So, with FND, the theory is that this autonomic nervous system, particularly the fight or flight sympathetic nervous system for the most part, is overactivated and almost locked in so then that your teen is having harder time turning down the volume of this fight or flight system. And it's already proven in the scientific journals of the brain functioning. So even though structurally your child's brain is okay, the brain functioning wise, not so regulated, right? Not that your child is born that way, but it is part of the learned habit and or something happened and then the fight or flight system got turned on, overactivated, and now your child is having a harder time turning down the volume. And so think of this fight or flight system as an oxygen to perpetuate the forest fire. This fight or flight system may not be the reason why your child is having an FND symptoms. However, think of this fight or flight system as the constant perpetuating factor. So your child is having harder time turning down the volume of the fight or flight system and the FND symptoms. And that's why the relaxation strategies come in handy because then they are going to help turn down the volume or fight or flight system so then eventually 
your child is able to turn down the volume, whether it's an intensity, frequency, or duration of the FND symptoms. So it may not directly stop or get rid of FND right away, but this is the very important step, if not the first step, towards the resolution of FND. That's why relaxation is helpful, if not necessary, towards the resolution of FND. So when the doctor says, just relax, use the relaxation strategies, that doesn't necessarily mean, although I can't really quote every single doctor on the planet, generally speaking, they don't necessarily mean that your child is having FND just because your child has an extremely high amount of stress or anxiety, and all he, she, they need to do is to implement the relaxation strategies. That's not necessarily what they're saying, although some might be saying that, but in, in their defense, I would say the relaxation is absolutely necessary to turn down the volume of the fight or flight system, which will then in turn help reduce the symptoms of the FND. Okay, so it's a long-winded answer, but it's really important to know how relaxation is helpful in reducing the FND. So then your child is less likely to get frustrated by practicing relaxation strategies once or twice only to find out that these strategies don't get rid of their FND symptoms right away, okay? So in terms of the relaxation strategies, Honestly, as long as you parents are okay with what your child is doing, and as long as they're healthy and safe, then I don't really care what your child does to bring the relaxation into their life. It doesn't necessarily matter to me, and I don't think that there is only one way or the way to go about the relaxation because everyone is different and then people have different strategies and preference and things like that. It, that being said, I want to talk about the difference between the deep breathing and slow belly breathing because these two things are both breathing, but they're separate and they're different entities. Now, why is it important? Because I have heard so many times from parents and teens themselves that they are being told to do the deep breathing. And in fact, it's a good thing. You should do it. You know, just take a deep breathe to relax and all these suggestions only to find out these teens actually tell me that they, first of all, don't like to be told what to do. Teenagers, right? I love working with them. And then number two, more importantly, when they practice this deep breathing, they actually don't help, but makes the symptoms worse. So things like they're feeling more anxious and stressed and then FND symptoms get worse. So the, the question is why, you know, because we believe that deep breathing is really helpful, right? But why it's not helping? And in fact, it's actually making things worse. Well, here is the biological mechanism for why. So when you think about deep breathing, I would imagine that you think about breathing in a lot of air, which is oxygen, and then you would breathe out a lot of air out, which is a carbon dioxide, right? So in our body, there is a certain balance between oxygen and then carbon dioxide. And when you breathe in a lot of air and perhaps not enough carbon dioxide to exhale, then your brain is start to think that, uh-oh, this balance between the oxygen and carbon dioxide is really off. That means we need to get more oxygen, even though your body has plenty enough oxygen in your body. So you are going to focus more on breathing in like this. And then if you keep doing that once or twice, it's okay, maybe, but if you keep doing that, then you're going to start to feel lightheaded and dizziness. And sometimes you would faint. And that's because the phenomenon of deep breathing is mechanically speaking the same thing as hyperventilation, if not over breathing. That's why many teens don't like to do the deep breathing because they don't make it feel better or relaxed. And on top of that, the deep breathing makes them feel worse. So that is what is going on biologically speaking. So your kids are not making things up. Okay, so now let's talk about slow belly breathing. So how are they different? Well, slowing down the breathing 
is pretty simple. However, the difference is that you would breathe in and out of the air that is normal. So you would inhale and then exhale the normal amount of air as if you're just breathing normally, but except just slowing down the speed and pace of the breathing. So how slow are we talking about? Generally speaking, universally, the sweet spot is about six breaths per minute. So that would be five seconds inhalation, five seconds exhalation, or four seconds inhalation and six seconds in inhalation. Either way, that equals to 10 seconds per breath. So times six would be one minute. So every minute you would be breathing six breaths per minute, okay? And if you can do that without feeling dizzy, lightheaded, or not doing deep breathing, then you are breathing correctly. But more importantly, your breathing should be focusing on the belly instead of the lungs. Okay, because when you're focusing on the diaphragmatic breathing or belly breathing, then it's almost like turning on this parasympathetic nervous system, which is the rest and digest system, to turn on instead of um, turning on the fight or flight system. So it's kind of balancing out to feel more calm, focused, and relaxed. So that is the beauty of slow belly breathing. And now I talked about six breaths per minute. So the question is how many minutes are you supposed to be doing it? As I mentioned, if you do this once or twice, it's not gonna make any dent. However, if you practice this slow breathing for about 20 minutes per day or longer, then the science basically says that your child is more likely to have the long lasting effect of this relaxation method by practicing more than 20 minutes. A day okay so I usually like to recommend to all of the people that I work with start doing a slow belly breathing for five minutes a day I don't care how when you do it could be in the morning or it could be at bedtime depending on what is convenient for you and then you do that for a week and then the next week so week two you would increase that minutes to 10 minutes a a day and then the following week week three then you would increase by five more minutes so now it's 15 minutes a day and then week four the subsequent week then that becomes 20 minutes a day so you're gradually increasing the time to make it more sustainable and easier on your body and you can do 20 minutes all in one sitting or if you're busy like anyone else then you can do two sets of 10 minutes of the breathing or four sets of five minutes breathing throughout the day. As long as you're doing a total of 20 minutes a day or more, then that counts, right? So it's not necessarily ideal, but it's so much better to do these things throughout the day than not doing anything. When you do this for enough time, then your body is going to remember what it's like to feel calm, focused, and relaxed. And therefore the slow belly breathing helps to turn down the volume of the fight or flight system. And then which turns into turning down the volume of the FND symptoms. So in conclusion, FND, as I mentioned, is a legit real disorder and concerns, and it can be scary, terrifying, and debilitating, and your child is not making things up. However, with the right approach, including relaxation strategies, it can be manageable, treatable, if not resolved. And just to be clear, let's say if your child is doing the slow belly breathing, but calling it a deep breathing, then it's more about the semantics. So it doesn't really matter. I don't really care as long as your child is doing the right type of breathing. So again, if your child's insisting to call it a deep breathing, then I don't really need for the team to be corrected, right? So as long as they're doing the right thing. What is your relaxation strategies? I'm really curious. So leave a comment in the below and let me know what kind of relaxation strategies that you're doing that are safe and healthy and you approve that is effective and helping. Because I would love to know. As I mentioned, everyone's different and I respect everyone's preference. So let me know what your relaxation strategies would be. Now, if you're a dedicated parent and your bright and compassionate teenage child are both ready to commit to resolve FND symptoms through step-by-step -step actionable solutions, then you might be a good fit for my program. 
click the link below today to schedule a call to talk to me directly and see if you qualify for the program. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next video.